tēnā tātou, uh, kua hui hui mai nei uh, i raru te tuanui o tēnei whare, te whare o te kauni hera o hera taunga, uh, tēnei uh, mātou, e mihi atu nei ki a koutou, kua hara mai nei tēnei rā, nō mai haere mai. Uh, tēnā tātou o tātou tini aitua, rātou te hunga, uh, kua riro atu rā ki paerau, o tātou nei mate, tua tini o te wā, uh, tēnei te tagi, tēnei te, uh, te poropora ki kia rātou hoi, nō rātou kia rātou tātou kia tātou te hunga ora, uh, huri huri no tēnā tātou katoa. Uh, welcome everyone to um, our uh, strategy and policy meeting today. Uh, great to see uh, so many people here. Uh, we have a big agenda, uh, lots of kaupapa to discuss today, so um, good to have a, a good turnout. Um, just acknowledge our, uh, our, our tini mate, uh, those that have passed on um, over the last uh, few months since our last meeting. And there have been many. Uh, there's Ratima Kuya Tukite Tetahi, but there have been many more. And so, Rato Kia Rato Tato Kia Tato Te Hunga Ora Te Nga Tato. So, um, <coughs> welcome. Uh, good to see you all here. Uh, just a few announcements before uh, we, we start. Um, our, our hui is being live streamed today. And um, so, kia ora. Uh, hunga kei tawhiti. Yeah, no mai haere mai. Um, and uh, just a reminder that uh, to you people that are, are watching this from home or wherever, is that the camera only kind of focuses on the on the on the table, and we are spaced uh, doing our COVID spacing, so you won't see uh, councillors uh, Oli, councillors Corbin, um, our rural uh, representative uh, Nick. Uh, Councillor Sears, Councillor Travis, and Councillor Watkins. So, uh, just be mindful of that. And uh, they all read their papers on the iPad. So, um, yeah, that's how we do it these days. It's all by uh, all by technology. So, um, so just just to be aware of that. We have a couple of uh, apologies. We have uh, Councillor Lawson and Councillor Harvey. I was feeling a bit mawiwi in our last hui, so. I told him, yeah, hooky out to keep the kainga. Mm, so he's gone home. Are there any other apologies? Just late apologies for uh, for Councillor Ku. Upright, can I get a mover and a signal for those apologies, please? Moved by Councillor Redstone, seconded by Councillor Watkins. Koto F Kai Mai, Ki Mai Ai. Aye. Any against? Ki Mai Kao. Thank you, Kapoi. Um, conflicts of interest. Any conflicts of interest during the hui? Uh, today, uh, just raise them um, uh, beforehand, and we'll manage them uh, as we normally do. Point. We have the the minutes from the 3rd of August uh, 2021 uh, that have been uh, circulated prior. You can move uh, uh, Councillor Dixon and a second to Councillor Sears. So those in favour, keep my eye. Any against? Carried. Kilda. Kapoi. So uh, item four. Um, I'll just give a, a, a brief report uh, oh, from the chair. Excuse uh, me, chair. Sorry. Edwin, leaves of absence. Oh, yep. Any leave? Leave. Gilda. <laughs> Thank you, point. chair. Are we standing today or not standing? Uh, what's what? Yep. Yep. Oh, two might. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Twentieth to twenty-sixth of November. Twentieth to the twenty-sixth of November. Sixth of November. Thank you. Cool. Councillor O'Keefe. Uh, uh, Thursday. This is the 4th of November. Ms. Uh, Sholem. Uh, thank you. Uh, the 26th to the 29th inclusive of November. Oh boy. <coughs> Anyone else? No? All good. Couple. Yep. Can I get a mover and a second for the, uh, those leaves of absences? <laughs> Councillor Dixon seconded by uh, Your Worship. Um, Mayor, ha Mayor Hazelhurst, all those in favour, keep my eye. Aye. Any against? Gary. Okay. So, um, you know, it's been a few months since our last hui, and a lot has, um, has, has been happening since then. Um, I just want to raise a, a few things that we will be discussing today in our, uh, in our meeting. Uh, firstly, um, just so the people at home 
uh, understand how our structure works. This is a strategy and policy um, standing committee, and under that uh, we have our four uh, subcommittees, uh, each have their own chairs and uh, committee members, and each of them work very hard uh, on a number of uh, kaupapa topics uh, supporting the work of the council. And so, um, and they all feed into uh, strategy and policy. So a lot of the, the work today uh, that we will discuss has probably been uh, uh, discussed prior in a subcommittee meeting. Um, and this comes uh, through the, the strategy and policy committee for uh, ratification decision making. Um, just want to take the opportunity to acknowledge uh, all the whānau staff, councillors uh, that have been involved in our, um, our COVID um, vaccination uh, mahi over the past few months. Um, uh, a lot of us were involved in, in the uh, Splash Planet in Camberley and uh, Kaupapa, and they were awesome. They were very, very uh, well attended and uh, well supported, and so I just want to acknowledge that. But we are aiming uh, for that 90%, and um, we had some updates uh, today from from our mayor around some of the stuff that's going on, and yeah, pretty exciting. So uh, we still got a bit of work to do, um, but but we're all in there. We're all in there. So uh, kia kaha tapa. Um, so on today's agenda, we're going to be talking about homelessness. Uh, we have uh, have had a, a, an independent study, uh, the first, to my knowledge, uh, that has come to the to the council table, and uh, we'll be discussing that today. Um, but you know, uh, we we do have a homeless. Uh, problem here in Hastings. Uh, the study uh, shows that we have a thousand people uh, living in deprived conditions and another 60 odd people that do not have any shelter uh, to call their own. And so, uh, yeah, that's, that's an issue we need to, uh, uh, to discuss and look for solutions. So there are some recommendations uh, to be discussed uh, in our paper today. Uh, we have the Havelock North uh, Business Improvement District uh, or BID, uh, so our local Havelock North uh, Business Association is looking to extend uh, what they offer uh, to a greater area and to a greater uh, number of, of businesses, and uh, we'll be talking about that process today. They want to enter into that process, um, and, and so that's in our papers today. So that's, that's exciting. Uh, there's an opportunity for, for more businesses uh, to uh, benefit uh, from coming together. Point. <coughs> Um, the strategic land and acquisition, land acquisition disposal policy. Um, so that's coming back to the table. Uh, this, some, this paper here has been um, uh, well uh, discussed in, in Wānaud over the past uh, three to four months, and it's coming back to the to the committee under a, a previous resolution uh, for ratification. And so, yeah, a lot of work has gone into that. Um, but we will go through it again, uh, making just make sure people understand uh, what what what's what's contained within it. Um, but for me, you know, we are the policy strategy and policy uh, committee, and this is an important policy to have uh, for the council. Uh, should we get into situations where we need to um, uh, look at uh, potentially using this uh, acquisition disposal policy, so it's uh, keeping the uh, the council safe. Uh, in terms of having a, a clear uh, pathway to follow. Uh, so that will be discussed. Uh, 3.4, uh, we have the Napier Hastings Housing Capacity Assessment. This is a big paper, it was a big part of a uh, chunk of the, um, uh, the reading uh, for, the, for the committee today. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, so we, we, need to, we need to be um, fully over uh, housing demand and our capacity to, to deal with that demand over the next uh, 5, 10, 15, and to 30 years. Uh, it's a big job. Uh, it's, a, it's a huge role that we play here at the, at the Council. And so this study is uh, to inform us on uh, the state of, of play uh, now and, uh, and also looking into the future. So we know that there's huge uh, housing demand at the moment um, and that is, is not going to uh, drop off, it's going to increase. And so council uh, needs to be prepared. Uh, we need to understand uh, what kind of capacity that we need in terms of infrastructure. Uh, we need to understand 
um, the types of, of development uh, that we need to undertake, uh, what we have been undertaking in the last 10 years, um, and some of the options uh, going forward. Um, so we're, we're going to be talking about that mixed greenfield, uh, greater intensification in our urban areas, rural developments. Um, so this paper really is uh, giving um, the council, uh, I guess, that strategic uh, overview. Uh, it's putting the stats clearly in front of us, and uh, the job for us today is, is really finding the sweet spot. Uh, and yeah, that's really what I want to emphasise. You know, what's weighing up everything that we have in front of us? What's the kind of the sweet spot uh, that we can get to as a, as a council? So um, no doubt there's going to be a lot of discussion and questions when we get to that paper. Um, but uh, yeah, very important work uh, to come out of that paper. A point. And yeah, 3.5, some exciting stuff going on um, in, in our subcommittees. And uh, we will have uh, both the District Development Subcommittee and our ECHO and District Subcommittee um, sharing with us their strategic overviews. And so this has been, um, you know, a lot of work has gone into uh, both of these strategic documents uh, coming to the table today. So really uh, excited for especially the chairs, um, Councillor Redstone and Councillor Shollum, uh, to be able to, uh, to share with uh, uh, the, the committee uh, I guess the vision and uh, the work plan going forward for both of those committees. So, yeah, really excited to uh, to get down to uh, that part of the agenda. Um, but just to say that, uh, yeah, it's been a huge amount of work uh, has gone on uh, within council over the past few months. Uh, Māori Wars representation review, street three waters um, reform, uh, resource management reform, local government reform, housing. Uh, supply, COVID-19, I mean, these, these are things that we're dealing with uh, daily, so I just want to acknowledge uh, the councillors for uh, the good work and uh, also um, our, um, our worship, uh, the Mayor, um, your worship, um, for, for the great uh, leadership around that. So, um, so I guess that's, uh, that's my Chair's report uh, for, this, for, this, um, for this week, and uh, open it up if anyone's got any questions. If not, if we can get a mover and a seconder for that report, please. Uh, Councillor Kerr, is that a question? Or? Yeah, oh, move, Kabai, and seconded by um, Your Worship um, Hazelhurst, Mayor Hazelhurst. All those in favour, keep my eye. Aye. Any against? Kia ora, carried. So, um, without further ado, we're going to move into. Uh, our Homelessness and Hastings uh, Discovery Study, and I'll hand that time over to Denise, who's going to work, walk us through the, the study uh, and presentation uh, today. Kia ora, tēnā No, no, you're right. Yep. Thank you, Chair, and thank you for the opportunity to present our, our Homeless Discovery Report to you. Um, before I start, I'd just like to acknowledge Warren Hickey, who's in the audience with his two lovely daughters. Um, Warren does a lot of work in the homelessness space, and particularly through COVID, the first lockdown and the second lockdown. So welcome to the Chambers, Warren, and thank you for um, the relationship that we've been able to form and working together. Uh, so I will take the report and study as read, and I will give you a brief overview of the strategic context and scope of the study before I introduce you to Kelly Richards. Um, Kelly will then talk you through some of the key findings and the recommendations. So the Homeless Discovery Study is Action 1.8 in the Hastings Medium and Long-Term Housing Strategy. That action was to, or is to, undertake a discovery on homeless people in the Hastings District to understand their characteristics, needs, and causes of their homelessness. Subject to the outcome of the discovery, determine any initiatives that can be taken to improve the housing situation of the homeless. Uh, the scope of the study was to uh, understand the char characteristics, needs, and causes, as um, in that action, to complete a stock tape of service providers in the Hastings District to understand what support is available, and to understand the New Zealand Aotearoa Homelessness Action Plan 2020 to 2023 
and how this links to the Hastings District. I now introduce you to Kelly Richards, who is the independent consultant contracted to complete the study. Kelly has held various roles within the health sector, dedicating most of her time to oral health and housing portfolios. This included setting up the Housing First contract uh, to address homelessness in Hawke's Bay. And Kelly also led the homeless network response in the initial COVID-19 lockdown. Thank you, Kelly. Tēnā koutou katoa, ko Kelly Richards tuku inga. Uh, firstly, I'd like to uh, thank Denise um, and Debbie for their contribution in the research um, being completed, um, but turning that action from the strategy into something that we can see and touch. We started this journey back in March. Early on, we knew there'd be many touch points in which Fano Panamu are connecting across government and non-government agencies. We discovered many layers, often describing it as the onion. We met with a number of key stakeholders in the journey and conducted an online survey and held focus groups to ensure we captured the voice of community. These meetings would further reinforce our approach that it was important not only to hear from key agencies, but services who had fortuitous encounters with Fano Panamu across the city, such as council staff, parks and reserves, and city assist. Have we answered the research question? I believe we have. The study presents the characteristics, needs, and causes of homelessness in the Hastings District. I'd like to highlight a few. During the, during the focus group sessions, council staff reported an increase in people sleeping in their cars at rural parks and reserves across the district. Many of the Safer Hastings partners noted an increase in the demand for services such as family harm support, access to health care, and somewhere to stay, also including mental health and addiction support. Focus group participants said they felt more like social workers at times and expressed that they were doing their best. Many were in favour of a community hub with wraparound services or a shelter. They also felt strongly about services being delivered by a specialist workforce. Faith-based organisations are ready to go, just tell us how. Show us how we can do more, they said. They really want a roadmap. However, they identified there would be challenges for them, such as compliance and regula regulatory factors, and the need to build capacity of individuals or groups within their congregations. Police and service providers said antisocial behaviour is predominantly occurring within the CBD. This would include drug, alcohol use, and begging at fast food outlets. It was also recognised by some that begging locations were becoming more organised with a small syndicate. Reports of homelessness numbers in the city varied, with most citing 20 to 30 on any given day. Alternatively, Warren from the church reports larger numbers, with up to 50 accessing outreach services. Based on the findings, I have provided the following six recommendations that align to the RTRO New Zealand Homelessness Action Plan framework. Firstly, Council take a regional task, task force, oh, sorry, form of a regional task force with EWI partners, the homeless, and regional and local agencies concerned with homelessness to develop a regional homelessness strategy. This is an overarching recommendation. It's the big picture in mind. It provides an upstream approach and leadership. It's important also that not one agency or council has to do the heavy lifting. Continue with Hastings Base Place Plan to identify social and community housing opportunities. This is great mahi and led by Hastings District Council in partnership with Ministry of Housing and Urban Development. Conduct research with the homeless to identify their views and perspectives. The study excluded their voice. However, many providers would often ask, were we engaging with whānau panamu? Support a sector-wide approach to drive collaboration. This is to ensure pathways are synced, such as standardised systems and processes and whānau centred. <coughs> Investigate and develop the feasibility of an integrated community hub with wraparound support services and could include overnight accommodation. Bring together a sector-wide approach, uh, sorry, bring together a sector-wide 
a sector-wide provider network to identify barriers and challenges. Collaboration needs transparency and involves honest Porero. It's a way to address and prompt system barriers. Organisations need to look within. This differs from the regional task force, which is a top-down leadership approach. A provider network works from the bottom up, and they work together, but this is when the magic can happen. Hastings, Hastings District has a long-standing and established relationship with community providers. It is these networks that have the resources, the manpower, and the willingness to be part of the solution. These solutions need to be for the sons, the daughters, the aunties and whānau who are living around us without safe and secure shelter. These are the ones just outside that door. Kia ora. Kia ora. Thank you, uh, Kelly, for that, um, that presentation. Um, are we going to say anything else? No. So before we, um, before I take questions, I'd I, 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 Pastor, um, I just wanted to maybe give you a couple of minutes to, to um, ko koe te tangata, kei te mahi ngā mahi uh, ia te rā, um, and maybe you just have some comments on the study or what, what you're seeing out there. Come, come down here and um, we'll mic you up. Oh, yep, yep. Introduce yourself so uh, councillors know for Waiku. It's on, it's on there. I'm sure there's someone here to blame, but I'll, um, I'll find out later. Uh, I'm Warren Hickey. I, I, I pastor a little church in, in the CBD of Hastings. And uh, I've only been doing it for about six years. Uh, before that, I worked here. Uh, I was in the IT department and I looked after your networks and um, <laughs> your iPads and uh, all the bits and pieces that, that you're using today. Um, but uh, I wanted to do something that was probably a bit more connected to our community and, and in a way that um, you know reflected kind of what was happening in my own family. My wife had decided later in life after having four children she wanted to become a nurse. And uh, I thought if she could do that, then I could do something else as well. So what I've done is I leapt into something, um, into, into pastoring a church, which is full of, you know, these nice Christian people. And, and uh, I grew up in churches um, my whole life. I've, I've been going to churches in, in Auckland and different places. And, and so you'd think I'd know what I was doing. Um, <laughs> I didn't really. And uh, so what I decided was as a congregation, you know, I needed to have a reason of everything that I did. Like, why are we doing this, you know? Why do we have church on Sunday? Why do we have Sunday school? Why do we, whatever we're doing. And um, in that process, we paired lots of things back to what was really important. And for me, what was important was expressing my faith, which often with here, even here, we have people who are people of faith, was expressing my faith through love. And so how do I practically do that? It wasn't, I never intended to try and fix a homelessness problem. I, I didn't even really know what that was. And uh, what I did do was I said, how do I love the people in front of me? And we're right in the city. So we just started with the people that are walking down the street. And um, one day we were eating lunch at church because, you know, church people like to eat. Um, and it's a good excuse to have a coffee and talk. And so we were doing that, and, and a couple of guys walked down the street, and they saw that we were eating, and they walked in, they said, what is happening here? And I said, oh, we're just having lunch. Do you want some? They said, okay. And then they looked for where they're supposed to line up. I said, no, no, you don't line up, bro. Just, like, get a plate and then eat whatever you want. Um, so the first guy got three plates and loaded three plates up, and then while he's standing there, he's putting one on the plate and one in his pocket. And I was looking at it, and I thought, what, what are you doing? So... I went to our kitchen and I asked the people in the kitchen, can you give me a container? They said, yeah. So I walked out and I said, listen, don't put it in your pocket, man. Put it in this container. Next thing you know, um, we started getting more and more people coming on a Sunday. And uh, the hardest part for me was, like, I didn't know any of their names. I didn't know anything like that. And I'm not a real social person. I don't like... I can talk at you for hours. 
but talking one-on-one is a little different anyway. So <clears throat> what do I do? All right, well, I'll find out what their name is. So I started off saying hi to everyone who came in because I couldn't do the whole, like, small talk thing. I didn't know, so I just said hi. And then um, I found out a name. And now six, six years later, five, six years later, uh, I drive around Hastings or I walk around Hastings and I see people and I know their name. And before I would have just seen a guy with a backpack and now I can recognise them from their walk and from the backpack they're wearing, that that's my friend who lives on the street. Now we have a large community here and, you know, I was asked, I mean, Hastings is obviously the best of the two cities, Napier and Hastings. Um, <laughs> And uh, I was asked, you know, what it is about Hastings? What, why, why does it feel good? I said, well, we kind of like, and I think the council is starting to do this, and I've seen as well, is treat people like people, whether they're homeless, whether they're different. Uh, you know, we have a really diverse population of people that work in our orchards. Mm -hmm. We have immigrants. We have all sorts of things happening in our city all the time. They're not just tourists. They're actually becoming a part of our community. And I think we've formed a way of welcoming people into that community. And I remember one of our, our councillors, I think, Councillor Nixon asked me, what, what do you see as the future of Hastings? And I said, well, you know what? I'd like to see a, uh, a woman, an elderly woman in her mobility scooter waving out and saying hi to some guy with spiky hair and covered in tattoos and walking down the middle of the street and then both saying hi, that no matter what you were, you were pretty welcome and thought this was your home. And the homeless in our city think of Hastings as home. Whether they have a roof that they call their own and they own, they still think of Hastings as their home. They still think of this place as where they're grounded and where they're settled. And what they're looking for is a response from other people who see them the same way. We're not saying, well, they're just beggars and they've come from that other city and we need to send them all back. They recognise that they're one of us. They recognise that they have brothers and sisters who may already be housed and have jobs. They may even work here at the council. They may have aunts and uncles and grandparents who have got jobs, who are settled, who were born here. Maybe some of them belong here more than you do, or I do. You know, I fuck a papa back to <clears throat> a really distant place up in the north, and um, they don't have many uh, flagpoles up there, but... Um, <laughs> Uh, we have a few down here and, and I, I actually have one on my property and I look at it and I go, no, I'm not going to, every day. But um, what I want to say is people have chosen to be, this is their home, whether they have bought a house or whether they rent a property or whether they live and sleep in their car in a park, it's their home. And so my heart is that we as a council and as a community find a way to ensure they don't lose that home. That doesn't mean we pay for them for everything that they need, but what we do is we recognise people, we acknowledge them, we accept them as being part of our community and then find a way that we can provide the best opportunities for them to make the decisions they need to make. We're not looking to make them for them. And right now I applaud you for the uh, housing, uh, the building more houses, creating more accommodation and more opportunities. But can I say to you, there are gaps, and if we can look for those gaps and find ways to fill them and be flexible and, and adapt and, and find opportunities where we can maybe take a tiny little step beyond what we're used to, we can accommodate this. My, uh, what I've, uh, I had to speak in a pub. I love speaking in pubs because uh, they have beer. Um, <laughs> uh, it's harder to have beer in church, so... Um, but I, I was speaking to the public and they said, you know, what can we do? And, and my answer was, you think about your family. You have a, a family, maybe you have a small family or a large family, and it may be spread out. Maybe they live in different parts of Hawke's Bay or around the country. But if you have a family and one of the members of your family is homeless, you're going to go, oh, I noticed that. What do I do? How do I help? Now, it might not be that you invite them to come and live with you. Maybe it, that particular cousin is one you don't want anywhere near your fridge. But you're going to care. And so I said, here's an option. How about you increase the size of your family by one person? If you increase the size of your family by one person, now I know even in Pākehā will be able to do, think of that. 
You increase your family by one person, and that person ends up homeless, you're going to worry about them and think about them and care about them. If we can do that as a community, we'll eliminate the problem. It seems a bit too easy, but I'm lazy, so. Thank you for... So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll take some questions and uh, questions first. Oh, yep, we'll start with you, uh, Councillor Nixon. Yep, I've got a couple of questions. I just acknowledge Warren's uh, address. Hanari and I paid him a visit an awful long time ago, and we've been trying to get uh, organised an occasion where he'd come down and talk to us, and I think he didn't disappoint anybody. It's uh, You have to hear the story to, to understand what's going on out in the community. Uh, the questions I've got... Um, um, I mean, this is very much a hasty study, and I understand the reasons for all that, but is anything being done to try and bring Napier into the loop? Because as a twin city, you know, it isn't just a problem here, and there is some migration from uh, with homeless people from here to Napier and back again. That's the first question. This, oh, now I've lost the agenda. The second thing is it asked us to, in the recommendations, to... Uh, endorse the report, I think it was. Sorry, I've lo lost it. I, I just wondered why that was there because we're already accepting the report. I mean, it's a good report. I don't have a problem there. Yeah, just receiving uh, the report. Yeah, well, I think we just receiving the report. Receiving the, report. Receiving the report. Well, it was, the, it was yeah. the next one. I'll just see if I can call that. Here we are. Um, through you, Chair, um, and I'll, I'll hand to Denise. Um, yeah, look, I think we recognise that, um, you know, we, we, we're Hastings, we're Hawke's Bay, um, that we've got overlapping housing markets and connections between our two cities. But our starting point on housing has been um, to be very focused on um, Hastings, um, not, not shut down from working with others, recognising this goes across... Um, you know, um, both cities, um, but I guess the, the starting point is what, what can we do um, in, in Hastings as a starting point and open to, you know, working with, um, you know, our fellow councils and communities in, in Napier, but, um, you know, we start with what we can what we can do and our focus has been to start with, um, start with Hastings and this was an action out of the Hastings long-term plan that you adopted as a council at the beginning of the um, beginning of the year. I, I definitely support that intention. Uh, the question I had was uh, that the committee endorsed the study homelessness in Hastings, and I just wondered, isn't, I mean, it just seemed a little strange. Yeah, I think um, if we can just kind of focus on the, we're, we're really asking you to receive the report, yes. uh, um, the recommendations, and yeah, just uh, oversight on our behalf in terms of adding endorsing and but Yeah, so. Okay, that's, yeah. that's fine, because I will move it when yeah, the time if somebody right. wants me to. Yes. Thank you, through you, the Chair. Uh, thank you, Councillor Nixon, for your question. So I can respond around uh, Napier, Wairo and Central Hawke's Bay District Council. So um, at Recommendation 1.0, Councils form a regional task force. So we've already been in discussions with Napier City Council and the me and CE are on board with that uh, happening. And we have uh, emailed Wairo, waiting to hear back from them, and CHBDC in principle from their offices are on board with that regional um, approach as well. New South Whanau are transient, they travel up and down. We've even looked as far as uh, Tairapiti, but we're going to focus Hastings, Hawke's Bay, and then probably potentially move it out wider than that. Councillor Watkins. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, two or three questions, um, probably for you, Denise, I think, all relating to 1.9.1 .1 in the report. <coughs> The 2018 census figures, and we're three years on from there, have you got any sort of feel as to what those figures could be today? Is that a pretty true reflection? Have they gone up? Have they gone down? Through the Chair, um, I do not have... Um, I can't answer that for you at the moment, Councillor okay. Watkins. I'd okay. have to go and do some research for you. OK, fine. My second question <clears throat> relates to um, people in the Hastings district were identified as severely housing deprived. In simple terms, could you unwrap that and just tell me exactly what that means, please? 
uh, I can respond to that. Thank you through the chair. So we actually did remove that in a version, so we will remove that, that comment severely. Yeah. Because when we looked at the stats, it didn't re reflect the percentage. Okay. Yeah. And my third question is, um, over the last couple of years in particular, we know there's been a lot of emergency housing provided mm. uh, by way of moteliers and what have you. Would those people come from that group of 1039 that's mentioned in here, is that, or is that a different group again? Uh, we'll have to come back to you on that one too, just okay. to clarify that 1,000 okay. figure. That's fine. Thank you. You wish with me? Oh, uh, kia ora koutou. Um, can I just uh, first of all acknowledge Warren and his amazing work, how blessed we are to have him in our community. Um, there is not too many Warrens uh, around New Zealand who actually care for our most vulnerable. So um, I have seen Warren's work for the last few years and... Um, his work has led to where we are today and understanding our, our overall position and how a community looks after its most vulnerable is what makes a community and its well-being of its people. And, and I'm, I'm grateful that we have undertaken this work, um, but this is just the beginning of the journey and, and uh, we can't solve everything for everybody. But this is like a true partnership of of everybody that works with our Fano and works with our people to look at opportunities, greater opportunities for them, to offer them a different place and a different way of life. So there are many people that work in this space and I'm truly grateful for everyone's work. So thank you for this report. I'm very happy to move the recommendations. Um, I look forward to the next steps and your implementation. Uh, and I'm really, really excited that we've had the opportunity. and. COVID, if anything, has helped us in this space because we've been able to truly identify um, and actually put a focus on our most vulnerable. And um, so it hasn't helped us in a lot of areas, but it's helped us identify our needs of our most vulnerable, and um, I'm grateful for this work. So kia ora koutou. Thank you. Councillor O'Keefe. Thank you. Tēnā koe te rana tira peidit. Had me in tears. Mm -hmm. I haven't got a question. Uh, you came here with a solution. Uh, there's homeless, but I, I feel that uh, compassion is homeless as well. Love in some quarters of our community is homeless. Understanding is homeless. I think that's what you're saying. Uh, the ability to reach out without expectation or want of reward. That's homeless as well. That's the message I got from you, brother. I mean, you come in here in your T-shirt, your jeans, and I don't know where you got the shoes from, but <laughs> but far as I'm concerned, you're a knight in shining armor. And the best thing we can do is take a little bit of your message and find it within me to find a home for that compassion and that resilience and the, and the fortitude to go where angels fear to treat. Um, you know, as far as I'm concerned, you should be the highest paid person sitting in here. I do. I truly and honestly mean that. So thank you for what you do, Pastor. I mean, I, I give a little bit to you, but that's stuff all really. But I'll, I will, as a, as a father and a grandfather, great-grandfather, I'll do my best to compliment what you're doing out there. I won't always do it with a great deal of success, but I'll, I'll give it a go. Yeah, bless you, brother. Yeah. You happy to second the recommendations? Oh, yeah, most definitely, yeah. Oh, well, well, well. So we'll I'll third it as well if you can. <laughs> yeah. We have a move in a second. I'll put those, yeah. uh, those recommendations. All those in favour, keep my eye. All right, any against? Kapai, Commission Carey. Thank you very much. Kia ora, thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Nama hi atu kia koutou. Um, uh, all right, we're going to move down into item six, have a look more business improvement uh, district, and uh, hand time over to you, Kevin. Kia ora. Kia ora, everybody. Um, I've had the report largely. Sorry. Kia ora, everybody. 
Um, I'll take the report largely as read. Um, I do want to introduce Emma McRobbie, who is the manager of the Havelock North Business Association, um, who's here today as well, and maybe I'll answer any questions um, you've got. The only thing I did want to point out is that in the report on item 4.3, we mentioned that there are 45 um, properties that are currently targeted in the Havelock North area. That does represent 250 businesses, so that's the properties, not the businesses. There are many businesses within individual properties. Happy to take any questions. All right, do we have any, any questions, councillors? Uh, Councillor Dixon, followed by uh, Your Worship. Thank you, Chair. Just some clarification, if you may. The purple map has got a photo there of the current CBD, and it's got Joel Road down to Campbell Street, and that's not in purple on that particular corner where it's since now been taken over by a number of new uh, premises, and it really should be in the purple. Is that an error, and can it be corrected? Uh, so, the map can be corrected. Um, what the rating team do is they make the map slightly bigger as extra businesses come on board. So, the businesses that arrive on the border, they automatically get um, taken into that packet address. So, yeah. so, those houses are no longer there. That's all been demolished, and it's really just the building's taking place now. Okay. We can check that. It might be an old map. Thank you. Yeah. Get that map checked out and yep. updated okay. if needed. Your Worship. Um, kia ora, and can I just acknowledge um, um, Kev and Emma and, and the board and the work that has been done to bring this paper today. Um, as, as the ex-president of the Hastings City Business Association that gathered up 480 people to uh, have a association. I know what a big piece of work this is to get people on board to understand the importance and value of working together collaboratively to um, create a, a vibrant town centre. So thank you for your efforts. Um, this is Havelock North growing up and this is a really exciting opportunity to build on the work that has already been created through the business plan and uh, add, add some extra funding um, work together as, as an association um, to bring to council and the um, elected members that work on the, on the board of the association, the Havelock Business Association, and uh, to make sure that we are looking after our town centre for Havelock. So um, this, is, this is a great piece of work. It's not an easy. They, the association's been talking about it for many years now, so I applaud you and congratulate you for bringing this work to, to us today and look forward to the next steps and next results. Kia ora, happy to move. Councillor Nixon. Yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, the Havelock uh, CBD is really flourishing. I suppose that's the best way to put it. Um, it just crosses my mind that within the area proposed, uh, a number of a number of the businesses are really manufacturers and might not see themselves as being... Uh, closely aligned to the sort of the sort of activity. How, I mean, they might just be scooped up. They might not be. How do we deal with that? Um, so the vote goes out to everyone in that area, and that's when they have their um, opportunity yeah. to have a say whether they're in or out of the bid, and then it'll be up to council to take that decision on board whether they enforce that targeted rate on the area. Um, or not. It's a, it's a capture-all or not. I'm sort of thinking of Martin Place, because I know on one side they are essentially all, you know, I wouldn't call them retail businesses, they're, they're very much manufacturing-type businesses. I, you know, if a block of people come back, I just wonder how we get the... Do we have flexibility, or is it all in or all out, or what? With the bid policy, it's all in um, or all out for the targeted yeah, rates. Come down and move Come on. Come on. <laughs> oh, okay. Come so our uh, online screen can see it. Um, just when you mentioned, hi, I'm Emma McRobbie, the um, Association Manager of Havelock North. Um, we have already have quite a few of our members down that way, um, so they actually opt in to be part of our membership, which is fantastic, and I think they see it being bigger businesses in our area as a way to support the local communities and support a lot of the smaller businesses who are using their services, whether that's through business means or their personal lives. Um, we, we obviously 
through this, we'll go through a process of talking more to those businesses and things like that, but the people that we have sort of talked to and connected with over the last, or my, in my 18 month period, they do support what the association's doing. Um, and as an association, my board has discussed the offerings we currently have and how this is gonna need to change over the next wee while. Um, at the moment, our catchment area is retail and hospitality and our CBD majority. Um, so we ha are looking at other ways we can support the more service-related businesses that will be looking to come into our membership. Um, and I've been working on building relationships with Napier and Hastings Business Associations and sort of learning from things they've done and what's worked and what hasn't. So kind of eliminating some of that trial and error along the way and being a bit more efficient. That's fine. You obviously... <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Have a second. Have a second. So we have a move and a seconder. And I think no more comments. Uh, put that motion. Oh, just wanna. Sorry, sorry, uh, just uh, sorry. What's your name again? Yeah. Oh, I'm Henari. I just wanted to make a suggestion. Flex me. We have a CBD business association as well. I think you could add value if you snuggle up to them. <laughs> yeah. Would you do that? Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. Yoda, thank you for the comments. We have a mover and a seconder. Um, for the recommendations, I'll put that. All those in favour, keep my eye. Aye. Those against, Kyle. Motion carried. Thank you very much. Kia ora Thanks, Kev. Thank you. Thank you. All right. It's, we're going to move down to the item seven. Strategic land acquisition disposal policy. Back to the table. Kia ora. Afternoon all. Um, through you, Mr Chair, I'd like to take the report as read, but there were a few comments I'd, I'd like to make, make. So this is a high-level document. There's been um, a number of discussions this year around this topic. Um, the, the, the purpose is that it's consistent, equitable, um, predictable, and obviously compliant with legislation. So I, I hope that's come through in the document. Um, we wanted to emphasise the statutory obligations um, under Section 7.1F, we're very much aware of the um, uh, iwi and Māori relationships that we have to foster and uh, adhere to. Um, 4.3 is, uh, is a repeat there of the, the statutory obligations. Um, the, the document needs to go through a final review, placed into it an appropriate template. There may be some minor tempo so I, um, typos, so I do apologise about that. Uh, happy to take any questions. Councillor Kerr. I'm just interested, is this a, what I call an inward-facing document for our council to have certainty of process, or is it also an outward-facing document that allows the public and those we engage with to have certainty amongst the process? A balance of both, yeah. Um, in which case, I'm very happy to move the recommendations. I think um, we've asked for it. We've had a workshop particular issues. Um, and um, it's great to see it. Thank you. Thank you. So we have a mover. Second to Councillor Dixon. All those uh, in favour? Keep my eye. Aye. Well, any against? Motion carried. Kia ora. Thank you, Sam. Cheers, mate. Oh, that was quick. Mm. <laughs> sure, that's right. That was my shortest report. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. 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 A couple of. All right, all right. We're going to welcome Mark. Um, he's going to, you're going to, you're going to, uh, I see he's going to give uh, some opening comments to this report, and um, and Mark will fill in after that. Good, Nigel. Yeah, through you, Chair. Um, look, I just by way of some background um, context and then some key points taking the reports, albeit they're very technical and voluminous. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, protecting our fertile soils and what is the engine room of our economy is an absolute focus and priority of this council, as is also homes for our people. And both of these areas are covered by national policy statements, which we are required to meet and somehow balance. And this isn't straightforward, and there are inherent tensions um, in terms of striking the right balance between um, these, these areas. But specifically today, the housing capacity assessment that be, be, 
that is before you is a requirement of the national policy statement on urban development that requires the council every three years to ensure that our planning and infrastructure decisions enable sufficient development capacity to meet the expected demand and provide a contingency or buffer of 20%. So these requirements um, under the National Policy Statement also require councils and overlapping housing markets to prepare a joint assessment, which is why you have an assessment that's been done for Hastings, Napier and the Regional Council, which are the partners to the urban development strategy for the Heritona Plains. So this National Policy Statement uh, also requires us to publish uh, the bottom lines arising from this assessment and to advise the Minister if there is a housing capacity um, deficiency as a result of this work. So that's the background context. I guess the key um, points, as you all know, land development in Hastings is guided by the Hedatonga Plains Urban Development Strategy, which has been through a full consultative process and adopted in 2010, and then through a consultative process when it was reviewed in 2017. And it sets out uh, the areas for uh, development. We all know that Hastings has experienced really strong growth in our population that was much higher than the, the official statistics predicted a number of years ago in business and as the fantastic place we know that's also been really attractive for uh, business. But um, you know, with this growth has also come pressure and we've seen some of that pressure manifest itself in housing where we've seen shortages of housing, homelessness that we've just heard about, emergency housing. I think, uh, you know, it struck me reading the report that, you know, house prices in Hastings have increased 332% uh, this, this century. And uh, I guess the other thing, when we're looking out 30 years, you know, the population estimate um, today in Hastings is estimated to be between 86 and 87,000. It's forecast in 30 years to be between 104 and 119,000 people in, in Hastings. So these are some of the factors that we're having to think about um, in terms of the decisions that you need to make about how we provision land and make investments and in, um, infrastructure to bring enough capacity on. So I guess the key um, points arising from the housing capacity assessment is that it is uh, assessed that uh, we need 6,500 um, additional homes to meet demand over the next 10 years. The assessment says uh, we can have confidence that this level of demand can be met from the current plan that we have in, um, in, in HPUDS, which would deliver around um, 6,870 um, homes. But we are recommending that it would be prudent to rebalance and bring forward um, some of the next stages of our development that's planned for Brookvale, Lindhurst, Kaipo and Irongate. The if, if you uh, agree with those recommendations, the practical implications of this um, will be that we will need to start in relatively short order um, the structure planning and the infrastructure planning for those uh, developments and we would be bringing a paper to you on the 30th of November to full council for those decisions. Probably the bigger fiscal um, considerations are the ones that go to the investment that's required in infrastructure and uh, services, which we would deal with through the normal annual plan and long-term planning um, processes. But also note that in this um, balance of um, you know, green fields versus um, intensification versus rural and coastal development. Uh, one of the potential deficiencies that we need to flag with the Minister um, for uh, the Environment is in the long term, some of the infrastructure capacities that we face in terms of bringing on this level of um, capacity to meet uh, the demand that's forecast. Um, as you'll be aware, um, you know, we are currently in the final stages of an infrastructure application uh, for $104 million um, that's specifically looking at um, basically upscaling our infrastructure and our CBD and CBD fringe if we are going to be able to um, do more quality comprehensive urban intensification and also to develop 
um, some of the housing that's contained in this map um, from Maraikakaho out through west into, um, uh, into Flaxmere. So um, there, aren't, uh, there aren't big pressures in the short term, but over the long run, um, there are some infrastructure issues that we um, think would be prudent to um, flag with the Minister. The Crown's already aware of it by virtue of the application that we've um, made for um, inf accelerated infrastructure um, funding. But in, in essence, that is, um, you know, in all of this detailed assessment, um, I think the key points that are in, in front of you and in summary, um, we're asking you to, to accept the report uh, to consider rebalancing and bringing forward um, some of the greenfield components of um, uh, the current HPUDS um, plan to publish the housing bottom lines that we're required to do under the national policy statement and to advise the Minister of the capacity assessment and the potential um, implications in the long run around some of our infrastructure capacity um, constraints. But on that, I'm happy um, with, with Mark and the team, who I just want to acknowledge, because this has been a huge amount of um, work over the course of this calendar year, um, to, to take any questions. So th thanks for that, uh, Nigel. Uh, that was a good uh, kind of lead into the into the, the full presentation, but um, <coughs> a great context and scene setting uh, within your comments. So we've got uh, we've got a couple of questions with regard to Nigel's corridor. So yep, okay, we'll start with you, uh, Councillor Watkins. Uh, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Nigel. Um, my question, probably to Mark. Mark, looking at this average, nearly seven hundred new houses a year. What are we building per year at the moment? First question, and second question is, have we actually got building capacity? I'll start and I'll end, Mark. So, as you'll know, because we've had this conversation um, quite a lot um, with the growth that's been going on, uh, we are now well over 500 homes a year um, that are being built in uh, Hastings. Um, you know, and I think an important part of this housing capacity assessment and the numbers that are there, we, we're assessing, and it's very hard to assess, but our best assessment um, through the work that's been done is that there is a current backlog of 1,200 homes as the, as the starting point in terms of the deficiency. So we need to be building um, you know, a good number every year and more again to deal with the housing backlog that we've, um, we've got. On, on, on your second point, um, yes, we've got some current challenges with closed um, borders, um, which will open at some point, but also all of the work that is being done as a priority in the region around the construction and infrastructure sector being one of the three sectors that we're working on to try and line up all of our um, skills, procurement policies to support um, basically people going into that as a career. But right now, yeah, there's some constraints. Yes, so, yes, well, <laughs> well, just, just if you wanted a number, um, then um, over the last uh, calendar year, um, we had a record number of building consents issued for new dwellings, um, and that was uh, 530. So when we're looking at a medium to high projection, we're doing that as to be prudent, to, to go on the high side, um, then there's a lot of upscaling need to be done by the industry, uh, for sure. Because uh, that 530 or so included, obviously, uh, the Ryman Healthcare Centre, which was going on, which is a big build, a big, a big one off. It also in included a number of uh, home or homes developments, um, which, which we will see more of in the intensification area, uh, not so much in the Greenfields area. So, so yes, um, uh, capacity may be an issue uh, for the first three to five years, according to the projections. So the projections, and these are from, from Stats New Zealand, are showing us coming down off a peak, but at high levels uh, in a post-COVID sort of COVID, um, recovery, and then about from 2023 off onwards, um, plateauing off, but certainly at a much higher level than we had previously seen. So about the same as the high projection last time will now be our, 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 our new norm, um, slowly tailing off as the population ages, but still. Um, rates for that sort of part of the period from 2023 to 2010 would look about what we're doing now. You know, at our peak now. Uh, Councillor Nixon. Yeah, thanks, Chair. Um, yeah, I've always been really supportive of providing for housing. Uh, 
not just because it houses people, but it's a huge economic driver as well. At the moment, in Glasgow, yeah, we have a major world conference going on. Uh, I think it's a COP26, I think, um, yeah, dealing with the climate issues. Um, and I think in the last week, government announced that it was uh, aiming to reduce uh, CO2 emissions uh, by half by 2030, nine years away. And I would have thought public transport has to feature in this thinking. And I just wondered, how do we take that into account as this council? Because yeah, I've been pretty critical of public transport in Hawke's Bay many times, so I won't go through that again. But somehow it's got to be put into the mix. And I just wonder, how do we do that? How do we plan our urban development that takes this, this really important aspect of living into account? Yes, I'll make some comments. I think um, we've got an agenda item that's coming up shortly, which is our eco districts um, strategy. And I yeah. think, um, <laughs> without stealing any thunder there, I'll let Councillor uh, Redstone as chair and Councillor Sears as deputy um, sort of chair, um, you know, wax lyrical on um, that, that strategy. But um, the, the few comments that I'd make is look, um, yeah, it's kind of related, but not part of the housing capacity assessment we're asking you to deal with today. Um, but I would, would make the point that we know that the construction sector um, is, is uh, probably one of the um, sort of least um, carbon uh, sort of neutral. We know from all the, the reporting that you get on waste minimisation that it's um, construction sector waste that's filling up the, um, the, the landfill. So I think the obvious answer is the choices that you get to make as a council through your yeah, eco-district strategy, uh, the fact that we've just been chosen as the pilot um, uh, and you know, another pilot in Hastings to do uh, the National Building Sector Construction um, Accord, and so the opportunity to look at a whole lot of um, things, and then from an intensification um, sort of process, um, which is in front of us, yeah, thinking about how we do um, urban intensification and how transport is one of many of the levers support um, you know, driving good quality urban comprehensive development is going to be, um, you know, have to be part of our future. It doesn't seem to sort of come out in the conversation. We have a lot of conversations, but it tends to be treated you know, in the eco committee almost as a separate issue rather than an integral part. Perhaps I can uh, offer a oh, comment. Yeah, 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 you know, we'll, 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 uh, uh, yeah, we'll leave that to, to Anne and team to, to uh, mention in their report. Uh, but it's definitely something that needs to be done. Yep. Uh, yes, thank you, Chair. Reading through the papers and the attachment, there was no mention of the Arataki block that was removed because of the odour concerns. Where are we currently at with that particular block? Because I know it's still sitting there under H-Buds. Um, perhaps uh, John might be able to uh, provide more information on the Arataki block um, specifically, but just to say that, that we have um, not included any of the reserve areas in HPUDs in the capacity assessment because they're not committed. So we can't, we can't so count it's, them. It's a reserve. So they're still sitting there as reserves. Okay. okay. But they're not included in the assessment. Um, does that answer your question? Yeah, it does, but I, Kaipo, was that the same? No, Kaipo's designated. Um, so we're, we're following HPUDs in terms of what's been designated, mm. not the reserve not the reserve areas. Councillor Sears. Um, thank you, Chair. I'm, I won't stand up, as I asked before, as nobody else has. So oh, no, no, yeah, if you want to stand, stand, you can stand, but you. if you don't, get the point. I'll say actually, Chair, this is probably really more of a question to you. Um, I have actually read um, the papers, believe it or not. I don't know that I can really say I understand it all. I can see why we haven't seen much of Mark lately, <laughs> having, <laughs> having seen the size of it. I um, actually am um, confused as to why we haven't workshopped this, given the huge amount of information and the, and the implications for it. I don't really feel I have a really good understanding of it. I am well aware of our requirements under legislation for growth. I'm also aware of the new NPS on fertile soils and the protections required. I know there's a conflict. I'm well aware that this has been through an HPUD, the process in HPUDs has been um, went through, I think, 2013, I think, and that this, these areas have already been designated. 
But I actually, again, as I did last time, really question actually pushing ahead with these, given the spatial planning that's coming. And I think what that may reveal is that some of these areas, I know they're designated, could be, well be areas that we no longer wish to push into. And I don't actually feel confident that I really understand the full implications of agreeing to um, the recommendations today around all of that. So I would, I don't know how others feel, but I'd really like to suggest that this is left on the table and we actually have an opportunity to do more workshopping and actually understand what this all means in relationship to the spatial plan. Yeah. Oh, okay. Can I just make one comment before councillors comment on that? Um, I understand that you know this this is an area that we've we've had a number of conversations on. As the chief, um, I thought that um, we 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 landed as a council is that we know that we have a commitment to doing a regional spatial plan that's going to take um, a couple of years. That in the meantime we have to follow the plan that's been adopted. The plan that has been adopted is. Um, as, as HPUDs, and we're presenting um, to you a, a plan in line with the requirements that we have around the national policy statements. Yeah, no, I uh, take on board your comments, uh, Councillor Sears. Um, and, and there is a lot of quarter to about the spatial plan coming over the horizon. Uh, that horizon is probably not for another couple of years. Um, two, maybe three, um, and, and so, you know, there's still uh, work that needs to take place, um, you know, in front of us today, and and this work is, is that, really. Um, there needs to be enough time for uh, things to be put in place uh, so that these things can happen, if that's what the council decides. So, yeah, I can understand the, 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 um, a bit hesitant about the volume of information and, and, and I guess the um, importance of some of the decisions, but yeah, I don't think there's a, um, I don't think we should be waiting, um, you know, if we can, if we can work through the issues, let's work through them. But uh, yeah, take your point though. Yep. Uh, your Worship. Uh, kia ora koutou. Uh, thank you through your chair. Um, yes, I understand, um, you know, Councillor says, um, concerns about needing to fully understand the paper and understand the implications of the paper. Um, I, I mean, I today we are receiving a massive piece of work and um, this work, is, as we've seen, has gone on for a very long time. It's required by central government to complete. So this case, capacity assessment for housing is something that is... Um, is very, very true and alive and real for us. And I see it as a short-term, medium and long-term solutions and how we manage and, uh, and, and how we provide for sufficient housing in the future. Uh, so, I mean, I, I'm very happy that through you, Chair, if you, you want to um, look at a, a different way but um, and, and making sure that councillors fully understand or, have, you know, that this, this situation isn't um, easy to to get all the answers out, I guess, in, in this meeting. Um, but for this, for the me, we have uh, age puds, and it's been and it's been delivered on for over ten years now, and and it is about delivering on what has been consulted with the community, and we all know our number one commitment is is making sure that we protect our soils and how we're going to manage that in the future. So I have a question around the intensive um, 6B, considering whether an updated intensification strategy is required. I'd like to understand what that means um, if we move these recommendations. Uh, because if we're going to look at different, we've got to look at different from greenfields. We have to take our community with us for higher density and medium and higher density um, because we're a very desirable place to live in Hastings. We know that people are going to be leaving Auckland post-COVID, and we know that we know a lot of Aucklanders. I know how many have come to Ryman's actually, um, and have lot more Aucklanders. So, so we have to look at how we're providing homes for not only our own people, but people that think that they are coming here for opportunities in both employment and lifestyle. So. Intensification strategy is hugely important to me and understanding 
how do we bring our community with us with intensification and what is that strategy and and how do we make a decision on if it's required or not under that recommendation so I think um, and I might ask Rowan um, to make any comments as um, uh, what, what I'd say is um, in terms of the balance of what we're presenting through you chair your worship councillors is, is obviously HPUD seeks to achieve multiple things and a balance between greenfields, rural and intensification. And in this plan for the next 10 years, um, you know, nearly 3,000 3, um, of um, those homes are proposed to be through um, inten you know, intensification and what we do in terms of infill. infill. Um, obviously, as a council, we've um, adopted a medium density um, design guide, which was a first step, I think, in terms of uh, Mr Wallace's work programme. One of the questions going into early next year, when that has been in effect for a year, is do we need to um, think about it other than just being a guide um, in terms of having some regulatory, um, you know, reg regulatory power? Um, clearly, one of the um, related things around intensification that we have to grapple with, and it's what we're being really transparent with the Crown about, for all of our, um, you know, all of our CBD revitalisation and inner city living and intensification, good quality intensification of our CBD and CBD fringe, we currently do not have the infrastructure in place to enable that to occur. And um, so, as part of a strategy, it's going to be having to actually look at a number of these things: the regulatory settings, the infrastructure investments that we're making and the other levers to give effect to what is a clear, very clear direction from um, this council um, that we need to start going um, up um, and doing um, you know, good quality urban um, intensification to um, try and shift the balance over the long run of the strategy, which is away from too much of a reliance on greenfields and rebalancing it back to being more of intensification. So I think the intensification strategy is, is absolutely for this council looking at all of those elements across our infrastructure investment, our regulatory tools, in addition to how do we um, bring the community um, on, on this journey, um, given, you know, on, I note the one um, example um, that whilst it hasn't come to us for resource consent yet, of urban CBD fringe intensification has not been particularly well received by the neighbours. Just, um, I'm just mindful that we haven't gotten into the actual presentation um, from Mark. Yeah, OK, yeah. Um, a lot of comments on the introductory uh, remarks from the CEO. So um, I'll take these two questions here and then, then we'll... Mark, you've been listening to all the questions and, you know, people obviously got some concerns. So if you just want to maybe... Yeah, we'll see how we go. Yeah, OK. So, uh, Councillor Corbyn. Thank you, Chair. I just want to pick up on that um, previous conversation. To me, this report is about um, recognising what's in age punts, but providing the infrastructure for it to happen, and then rebalancing. And um, this does come to the intensification strategy. Um, we've got to provide infrastructure for the greenfields, but we also have to provide infrastructure for the intensification and I think we're at the point where we need to say, yes, we are going to do a strategy for intensification. It's uh, the percentages, the targets have been there for, oh, I'm going to say, 10 years. Um, they haven't shifted from what they were 10 years ago. And we've um, rejigged them um, and say we've got to start again in 10 years' time. I think we need to do something now in terms of strategy for intensification. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I absolutely agree with that as the chief, and I think the, um, uh, the I, I think that's a, um, that, that's an urgent piece of work heading into next year, and I think that there's a number of elements to that that are already in play. So, um, you know, this council made a decision to adopt the medium density um, housing housing guide. Um, and to use it in the instance to see if we could influence and encourage um, developers, but with a review after a year, that year is up. Um, and as we head into 
um, Mr Wallace's work program around the rolling review of district plan and how we think about our regulatory tools. Um, absolutely, that's, that's part of it. Um, we, we have currently an application before um, the Crown and a letter going to the Minister of Environment that's basically saying for us to deliver on our housing capacity assessment, we actually have some, in, you know, we actually have some infrastructure constraints that we need to solve because we currently don't have provisioned in our LTP um, major infrastructure investment in the, um, in the CBD. And so those elements I think we need to um, bring together into an intensification strategy. So, so through you, Chair, um, so 6B needs to say Council undertakes a uh, intensification, uh, just, uh, intensification strategy because while we've had a design guide and we've had a medium density strategy, um, as has been pointed out by uh, other councillors, that um, it's been very, very difficult to um, encourage, to uh, get people to think about um, having more higher density within various parts. And just as we require infrastructure for greenfields, we require infrastructure for intensification. And I think this is a key piece of work that in the next part of this project needs to happen. I'd, I'd like to change B to Council uh, updates and intensive, intensification strategy. And we need to have a look at an incentive strategy, and as others have done in New Zealand. And that's around um, development levies and, and how we um, encourage our developers to, to look at and um, support intensification. So through you, Chair, um, just building on that, then you worship if we had something very strong in there, like that you direct the Chief Executive mm -hmm. to develop an intensification strategy for Hastings, looking at the full range of um, mm -hmm. levers, you know, regulatory infrastructure mm -hmm. incentives, and to bring that back to Council, um, you know, in, in the first half of 2022. <coughs> Yeah. Okay, so we've got, uh, we'll, yep, we'll, we'll, we'll note that amendment um, when we get down to that one. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I don't know whether it's practical or not, but having um, got to that point, is it likely that um, intensification could replace one of these greenfields opportunities in the recommendation? I think we have to do the work um, first. Obviously, the process that we've got to go through, and again, Rowan or John, um, this is your area of expertise, obviously the process to giving effect to um, structure structure plans and choices council make, um, and, you know, they're, they're not quick processes. They, they take a number of, they take a number of years. Um, so, um, you know, and, and I think what this is trying to set up, Councillor Corbyn, is that, um, this is going to be, um, you know, monitored to death, coming back to council regularly in terms of the choices um, that you get to make as councillors. Yeah. Um, so, um, you know, if we work on the basis this is a long-run strategy, we're asking you to adopt a housing capacity assessment, but some of those choices can change as we do the work around, um, you know, well, if, if we can bring these levers together and we can do more intensification and do that more quickly, you can make different sets of choices, but we just need to do the yep. we need to do that work. So yeah, so we are we are looking at these two technical reports, um, which will advise uh, they're, they're tools for the council, mm -hmm. and they're tools for us to, to utilise in terms of our our planning going forward. So you know that's what we're talking about here. Um, all of the subcommittees um, will get to uh, to dive into the into the depths of um, of these issues uh, going forward. Uh, however, uh, we have these technical reports and uh, they need to be, I guess, uh, ratified by Council today. So, um, Rania, and then uh, we'll pass on to uh, Mark. Um, my aspirations, and I suggest many around the table, um, is for any of these uh, new areas for development that might be brought forward to have a strong medium density footprint. So, my question is, is there anything in these recommendations that is either preventing or slowing down the application of what I would like the future to look like? Okay, and then following on is the change to the recommendations that's been made, has it strengthened that 
chances of my aspirations being met being a higher medium density footprint. In that case, I am very happy to move the amended recommendations. All right, okay. we're going to get right to the recommendations, people. Um, and there they are. Uh, so we have uh, section B there. It was A, A in you too? B. Okay. B directing <coughs> B directing the chief executive to commission an updated intensification strategy which considers regulatory and non-regulatory levers and incentives that council can apply to incentivise housing intensification objectives. The strategy will be brought back to council for consideration and adoption before 30 June 2022. Is there a current strategy? Sorry. Is there a current strategy? Well, the, the only the only strategy that you've really got at the moment is the um, the urban and medium density design guide. So, uh, so I, I'd like to cross out. So, we've got a medium density yeah. strategy. So, so, so we do have a medium density yeah, strategy, and and a number of recommendations of that since it was adopted have have been implemented. One around development contributions, uh, one around okay. district plan provisions, which are now in your district plan. Another one is the um, design guide, which is now done. But there are a number of others that deal with the incentive side of things uh, and uh, other encouraging and more active roles that um, are wait have been waiting their time to see the light and uh, the recommendation up here is the perfect opportunity for that. I'm happy to move the recommendations unless Your Worship... Yeah, okay, so we've got to move up. Councillor Kerr moves, seconded by um, Your Worship, the Mayor. Um, any other comments before I... Councillor Sears? Another question, please. Um, Mark, out of the 6,870, again, understanding that they're in HPUDs, I just would like to know how many of those 6,870 are on Class 1 soils, please. Um, that figure's made up... Uh, that figure's made up for 40%. Um, Greenfields, 35% intensification and 25% um, rural. So, Specifically, um, though, it's, yeah. it's Councillor Sears' question, we'll probably have to come back. You, you don't know oh, what, what, I, I, what of Greenfields is soil types. We would need to... Yeah. Unless so around 40%. Got so most, most of these Greenfield sites are on, on good quality soils because they're urban edge developments. Um, a lot of them have been selected because of perhaps other limitations on productivity other than the soils themselves. Yes, thank you. Good point. Any other comments? No? Okay, we have a... Sorry, sorry, a point of clarification. Um, I just need some clarification on that last comment made by... Um, so so, that, so I think you. the question, Mark, is um, just to be clear. So, Councillor says your question was Class 1 soils, yeah? Yes. Yeah. So, um, not all green fields are, uh, are Class 1 soils, are they? So, I mean, I think, no. I, you know, I just think we, we need to be yeah. careful about... Um, we'll come back you know, to, to come back with come back the, of the designated greenfields development. What are the what are the soil type classifications? Because they won't all be they won't well, be class that, one. That's 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 correct. The, the Iron Gate area, for example, is on class seven. Yeah. So, so we have a move in the seconder uh, for the recommendations of this um, of this agenda item. Um, move no, we move by Tan. Seconded by uh, Your Worship. Uh, those in favour, uh, keep my eye. Aye. Aye. Any against? One against. Would you like your name recorded? Cup white. Um, motion carried. Thank you. Kia ora. All right. We're going to have a break at three o'clock too, people. So, um, yeah. Okay. Okay. Item, item nine. So I uh, would like to invite um, uh, the chair of the uh, Eco District and deputy chair to uh, to present to present their uh, Eco District strategic overview. Right. Mm, you don't need to go up there. You're happy to come. You well, want to come, come up? up here. You want to come up uh, front? Not oh, a Thank you. 
Exactly. Yeah. It's fantastic. Kia ora koutou. Oi, 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 oi. Who, who, yeah, no, who, no, who's not here? Uh, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Kia ora koutou. So the Hastings District Council established the Eco District Subcommittee in 2019, and this documents the first strategic overview to be prepared by the committee. I'd like to acknowledge the amount of work and time and energy spent by the staff and officers, in particular Diana, who's been working really hard to get this um, completed and in particular graphically designed for today. So it's been a big job. Um, so this is a living document which is recommended to be reviewed annually. With the help of key partnerships, Hastings District Council aims to have a sustainable future for our makapuna and to do this, we've set the following goals. One, to use our natural resources with respect, wisdom and foresight. Two, to minimise our carbon footprint and adapt to inevitable climate changes. Three, to treasure and nurture our natural environment. Four, to model sustainable actions and work with and inspire others. So those four goals actually turned into our priorities within the strategy. And in order to meet them, we have a three-step process to identify, prioritise and improve. We acknowledge we have a small sphere of influence, but our approach in this strategy is to encompass all areas where we can make, an influence, make a difference. We want to provide as many opportunities and connect across as many work streams as we can. We hope to bring positive change by reducing our waste streams, committing to improving our own council's controlled building practices, managing our carbon footprint, supporting increasing biodiversity and improve our water quality. We feel our strategy is well placed within national and regional policies to bring about a change in our region's our approach to all things eco. Mitigating climate change is the biggest challenge this generation will face and we acknowledge we must take action now if our children and their children are to look forward to a sustainable future and we look forward to implementing the actions we identify within the strategy. So I just, and I'd like to say I said that on behalf of myself and Sophie, who had some input into that, and Diana's got some add-ons, maybe? I think you covered it all. We um, do request this for the committee to receive the report and for the strategy to be accepted, so we can cool. start working. Thank you. Well, right. I probably should answer, but Simon, did you have questions about why you didn't get enough in, into the strategy about transport? <laughs> no, no, I'm not, you know, they're not getting me into <laughs> No, I seized that opportunity. I knew it was coming up, but I felt that was a good time to raise that issue, which yeah. is why I did it then. Thanks, Simon. Thanks, Simon. Uh, Your Worship. Uh, kia ora koutou katoa. If I could do the haka, and I one day I'm going to learn, Inari, that's your goal before I, next year, um, I would do it right now. I am so excited by this piece of work. And can I acknowledge Anne, Sophie, Diana, and Craig, and all the team who have been involved in bringing together our first ever uh, environmentally aware and sensitive and action plan for an improved, sustainable environment of the Hastings Heri Tonga. This is a, a massive piece of work. At the moment, the world leaders are talking about climate change at, at a leaders' summit. And we have now our own action plan that we can help our community, each and every one, take responsibility to look after the environment. Um, I, I'm so proud of this work. We are two years into our term. We have one to go. And sadly, we have to work things into three-year terms. But what we have got something that is going to go far past people sitting around this table. It's going to go and carry on through this organisation. And my dream, my hope, and my, um, my personal action is that each and every one of our community takes this plan and, and adopts it for themselves. Whether that is reducing waste, whether that is uh, minimising um, the... 
impacts of climate change. And we know that we face as a council every day the, the significant impacts of climate change in our coastal hazards, our coastal um, and our storm events. And so we are seeing this change happening before our eyes and we have to adapt and modify the way we're doing stuff. So the most exciting part of this in your leadership is actually your actions. And I absolutely congratulate you and congratulate everybody who's worked on this. Would you like to stand up, please? Everyone who's worked on this. And I will give you a big, very big First ever eco districts and our first ever model for a sustainable community. Kia ora koutou katoa. Kia ora. <coughs> you want to move that, um, you want to move the recommendations that we received that um, strategy and um, seconder, seconded by um, Councillor Travis. Um, all those in favour? Uh, Kim aye. 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 Many against? Carried. Yeah, just want to say, um, just in addition to the comments of uh, on Mayor, that um, yeah, all eyes are on the climate at the moment, um, climate change, and uh, our government especially has made, made some commitments uh, just in the last few days to uh, to re reduce our our emissions by half, um, by fifty percent. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, yeah. So yeah, everyone has to do more. Yeah. You know, everyone has to do more, uh, and that includes us here here at the council. So. Uh, the strategy is very timely, and um, you know the actions uh, we'll be um, putting in place. Um, but uh, having a strategy to guide us is, is really key. So, total uh, uh to you all, um, Anne and um, Sophie and the team uh, for putting this together. So, uh, kia ora koutou, kia ora tapu. Yeah, oh boy. All right. So, um, yep, cool. We're going to move into item ten. And uh, we'll invite um, the chair of the district development subcommittee, uh, Wendy Shalom, uh, to come forward and to uh, again present uh, 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 the district development uh, strategic overview. Kia ora. Uh, kia ora. Um, so uh, this piece of work was actually started right back at the start of this term and I'd really like to take a moment to acknowledge Councillor Kerr who started this process. Um, and uh, unfortunately the LTP and COVID got in our way so we're only just bringing it to Council now. Um, however, the strategy has been in draft form and very much used by this subcommittee for quite some time now. And while we're only just bringing it here for adoption today, uh, the mahi has been certainly happening. Um, I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge all of the subcommittee members for their work on this, but also especially Lex, who I don't know how he juggled the LTP and this. Um, and I'd like to also acknowledge Lee, who's been fantastic support. Um, so uh, the subcommittee has identified in our strategy three key focus areas. However, the work of the subcommittee is much more broad. Our three focus areas are housing, employment and transportation um, and we've got indicative measures around those. However, like all of the subcommittee uh, strategies, we acknowledge that this is a living document and will be reviewed on a regular basis. It's also important to note that the subcommittee is acutely aware of the important conflict that we have to monitor and report back to this committee on with regards to housing demand conflicting with our need to protect our productive soils. Um, which is absolute foundation of our economy. Uh, the subcommittee is clear that the focus must be on creating a more compact community. So it was heartening to hear the conversations that just happened earlier in this meeting. Um, we need to limit that urban sprawl uh, onto our productive uh, Heratonga Plains and actively control that. Uh, the work is already underway um, on a workshop, which uh, I believe Councillor Corbyn is, is heavily involved on to come back to Council to talk about soil types and um, what we can do with future planning. So we're certainly looking forward to seeing that. Uh, the subcommittee notes that this balancing act is the only way that we can provide for the people today while also protecting our whenua for the people of tomorrow, uh, which is a key focus of this subcommittee. Uh, 
actually. Would, do you have anything you'd like to add? No, it's no? a fantastic job you're doing. Thank you, Chair. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so it's with great pleasure that I present the strategy to strategy and policy and hope that you will adopt it. Oh, boy. Awesome. So um, just like uh, the Eco Districts uh, Committee, we'll, we'll get you guys to all stand up and uh, who, who, who was involved in developing the strategy. Here to everyone from the subcommittee. So do you want to move? I'm very oh, happy to move. Yep, I'm okay, well, we need to move um, and we'll second. Uh, did you want to say? Oh. Yeah, I just, um, you, you can I, I yeah, acknowledge <laughs> your leadership, ta Wendy and Tan, and all the committee's leadership. Um, district development is probably is, um, is one of our most important um, subcommittees in terms of looking after um, what you've said and looking after our district and 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 just not for today and but for many years to come and so how we how we manage our soils how we manage our people how we manage employment and the well-being of all of the well-beings of local government are captured in your strategy and what a, an amazing amazingly presented um, document to work by, to live by, to remind ourselves. Um, and once again, it's making sure that all of our community um, is part of feeding back into how we're achieving this, whether that's the business associations or, you know, any of our wider groups and um, being part of this. And so congratulations to you all. It's a fantastic piece of work. Thank you. Oh, boy. So we've got, we've got to move in a second. Uh, I'll put the put the uh, recommendations. All those in favour, keep my eye. Aye. Any against? Carried. Thank you. Just before you go, um, let's just move into the next item. I think we've got a summary recommendations from the district development subcommittee uh, held on the 12th of October. If you want to comment on anything there or? Um, just to say that uh, the subcommittee uh, spent quite, quite a bit of time got, uh, traversing this particular uh, recommendation which has been made through uh, to strategy and policy for adoption. Um, so it's looking at making sure that we've got um, uh, a, a policy around uh, mobility parking. Um, we needed a criteria for, for under which that we can waive parking infringements um, and also uh, providing parking exemptions for not-for-profit and non um government organisations and volunteers working within our CBD. Um, so it's acknowledging that uh, often their staff and their clientele um, require acknowledgement uh, in the forms of, of free parking for some people. All right. Any, any questions on, on that? No? Or well, can I get a move and a seconder for that uh, to be passed? Moved by uh, Councillor Travis, seconded by Councillor Sears. All those in favour, keep my eye. Any against? Gary, good right. Thank you very much. Uh, item 12, uh, report on activity from the Great, Greater Communities uh, Subcommittee. Rebecca? We'll get this all done before uh, three, and then we'll have a break, and then we'll come back in for the PX stuff. Okay. Cool. Thanks, Rebecca. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, in the absence of Councillor Lawson and Councillor Harvey, I'm happy to uh, take this as read and answer any questions. Any questions for Rebecca? No? Can I get a move in the seconder? Oh, sorry. Um, I was just interested in Camberley. It just says um, further discussion is pending, will keep us up to date. Is there anything you can share with us? at the moment, or is it really...? Uh, yes, the Chief might be better placed to answer that. Just Campbell? in terms of Camberley Mars Plan. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, the um, conversations that we have... So we've, we've done some really good work in terms of the work that Council's did, engaged master planning. Um, the key issue that we're resolving uh, at the moment with um, Kainga Order um, is in the context of a third of Camberley being state housing, um, their, um, their, their intentions and trying to understand how it fits with their current um, investment framework. Um, we're really clear if we're going to uplift um, and support Camberley's aspirations, um, then um, actually the agency that's responsible for um, 
you know, a third of the suburbs um, housing that's all at the end of life are pretty important around um, our Camberley strategy going forward. So that's the crux of the issue that we need to uh, we need to resolve. All right. Okay. No more comment questions. I'll get a. Oh. Um, through through you, Chair. Um, just a question on. Um, the work of Mayor's Task Force for Jobs and where we got to with that, um, I mean, there's the, from a national perspective and from our own local perspective, um, we, we were with that. Yeah, certainly through you, Chair. Um, so we had um, Noah from um, nationally come and speak to us at the Great Communities um, Subcommittee meeting last meeting. And so he's now working with the youth team to really understand how they can um, add, add value to what we do and give us uh, um, really ideas around um, adding, uh, yeah, adding value to what we currently do because obviously we do quite a lot of extra things that count other councils don't do, so our mahi for youth, all our youth potential work. So yes, Noah is now working with us to understand how we can add to that. Great, thank you. Anyone else? Can I get a mover and a second, please, for the, this report? Moved by Councillor Dixon, seconded by Councillor Redstone. All those in favour? Uh, keep my eye. Aye. Any against? Carried. Thank you very much. Thanks, Rebecca. Um, uh, uh, item 14, uh, Councillor Reds. Oh, I know we did, we did 13 while um, Wendy was up here. Um, separate, separate. Was that separate? Yeah, this is, this, this is just the update. Oh, this is update? Yeah. Oh, okay. Do you want to, yeah. I mean, we'll take these all as read, um, but if, if the chairs want to... Um, just... Very quick, yeah. if that's all right. Um, so just, just to acknowledge, uh, again, a lot of mahi's been going on, particularly in the informal space with district development, uh, which has been fantastic because we're seeing uh, hopefully efficiencies for officers in terms of being able to socialise uh, work early with governance um, and getting that input, input early on. Uh, so we've got a future report being brought to district development around options for business attraction into the CBD in a COVID environment, which we're looking forward to. Uh, work continues on the parking master plan strategy um, with a scoping report pending coming back to district development. Um, and also there's ongoing reporting on housing and in particular with a focus on that residential, commercial and industrial land uptake because um, obviously that plays into our priority around protecting the fertile soils. Any questions, councillors? No? Happy to move. Councillor Kerr moves. Seconded by Councillor Sears. All those in favour? Keep my eye. All right. Any against? Carried. Thank you very much. Uh, item 14, Councillor Redstone. Or Craig? Yep. Craig's got it. Come on. <laughs> Kia ora. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, this is just a small follow-on item after the more substantive um, acceptance of the strategy, and it was great to see it was well-received because you will be seeing some interesting um, um, budget bids as part of the annual plan process to support those actions. Um, this is a very brief just update of the committee um, where the substantive, substantive workload was around um, getting that strategy um, ready for you today. Um, probably just a key highlights, obviously, we had that... Um, very important workshop with the Hawkesbury Regional Council on um, joint actions. Um, we're just trying to, at this point in time, get the two lots of officers together to come up with that 10-point action, and in, that, in the major eco-strategy, it's noted as a shared item. Um, in the similar vein, in working through with Ngāti Kanunu and the Tai Whenua. Um, the, the report notes just some of the work happening in the solid waste space, and it's fair to say at the moment, with central government getting so big, uh, they are firing um, consultation, submission documents um, at local government, the private sector, at, a, at an alarming rate, which is um, um, somewhat difficult for officers actually to keep up with. Um, as an example, I think um, Ms Atkins in the waste space has got three or four consultations that she'll be looking to feedback in the, in the next wee while. Um, MB has just released economic regulation and consumer protection to three waters looking for comment before Christmas. In the new year, Tamata Arawai will have standard acceptable solutions. We've got the three waters, we've got local government reform, we've got RMA reform. The New Zealand infrastructure strategy has been released, which has a whole pile of things which we'll need to consider. Um, many of it support some of council's initiatives and some of them um, less so. 
um, um, particular one item in here talks about a planning framework that prioritises houses. It does not mention uh, protection of the environment or fertile land. So there are a number of government documents which potentially are a challenge to our strategies that will need to be actively involved. Uh, Reserve Bank, which Bruce, I've asked Bruce's team to look at, has come out with the Climate Change 2021, which is looking at monetary policy around climate change and so forth. So it is a very active space across not just Eco District, but all of them to try and stay on top of. And, and you'll find as part of those budget bids coming through is actually creating resources to actually for this council to stay on top of it. Um, also, just in the report, we noted the, um, another important part of the um, Eco District Committee is um, the Reserve Management Plan planning. And there was just a note that we're progressing. Um, over the last few days, we've had a very successful um, succession of three workshops with the Frimley, um, very small amount of participation but positive, from what I understand, because I wasn't at that one. Uh, the ESC um, workshop that was held on Saturday afternoon was highly um, engaged in, with over 60 people there, um, with a very positive outcome, um, some very good interactions. And similarly, a slightly more, smaller workshop um, on Sunday afternoon, uh, Councillor Nixon and Dixon were at that one, where the Havelock community um, workshopped um, values, constraints and opportunities for the Havelock Reserves. Um, we do have follow-up um, workshops coming with those communities just to grab the, um, grab hold, stay hold of um, the good momentum and that will look at solutions which will then help the team move into the more formal um, reserve management plan process. Um, but happy to take questions or the, for the chair to correct me on I, anything. No, I was just going to add actually to welcome Jonathan Stockbury to oh, our committee. Sorry, yes. Um, as a rural board member, and Jonathan's going to, at our next meeting, give us a presentation on managing glyphosate effectively. Um, and we've also, just to add to another little work stream we're doing with Walter Brewstead, is more green and less sealed surfaces, and we did have some corridor with Countdown around that, who are, have advised they're going to plant 3,400 plants in their new built around their new building, but next time we'll think about permeable surfaces and trees in the car park. So we've, and there's also a um, presentation by a group called Schneeg, um, a Havelock North Church group who would like to show their planting concept for Napier Road. So we've actually got a few things already starting to, to pick up, even though they're small. Yeah. Councillor Kerr, do you have a question? Um, Compliments to the team that attended at Eastdale because it was prickly to start with and then became very, very positive. Um, so well done. Um, when are we likely to go back to those communities? Is it within weeks or is it likely to be in the new year? Um, dates are getting finalised. Sorry, through you, Chair. Dates being finalised will be within two to three weeks. Why, thank you, uh, Eco Districts, for that report. Can I get a mover and a seconder? Uh, moves to Councillor Sears, second to Councillor Nixon. All those in favour, keep my eye. Aye. Any against? Gary. Up white, kia ora. Item 15, uh, District Planning and Bylaws Subcommittee. We welcome the Chair, uh, Councillor, Councillor Watkins, to the, to the table. And John, kia ora. Well, thank you, Chair and Councillors. My pleasure to present this report on the activity of the District Planning and Bylaws Subcommittee. Before I go into the report, which is before you on pages 96 and 97, just two, two aside issues I would like to mention, uh, both very good issues. First, I'd just like to thank all our staff and all the local iwi for their efforts and getting the three po for the Tiara Kahikatea completed recently. Um, this was an, ex an excellent example of the partnership using Tarangi design principles, right from the very first step in the process. So it's been a, it's, it's a shining example there, and um, well done to everyone involved with that. Um, and secondly, just for information, the International Accredit Accreditation New Zealand will be hosted by Hastings here from November the 15th to the 19th. Um, 
And what they're going to do, they're going to be working on the second floor um, with our building and consents team, and they go through, I guess, it's a two-yearly audit, John. You might like to just expand a little bit on that. Yeah, it's our uh, two-yearly audit, who, and they go through a very, very intensive uh, assessment and uh, audit of all our processes, policies, and uh, procedures. So that should be a pretty enjoyable week for the staff, and they're all looking forward to it. <laughs> Thank you, John. So, councillors, if we could just go to the report on page 96 and 97, which is very succinct, very clear, um, but I just would like to comment on several items there. Um, we've been talking about Iron Gate York. That is the number one priority project um, at the moment. Um, our team have been working with the Heratonga Tamatea Settlement Trust and a draft plan for that block of land has now been um, developed and that is sitting with the trust at the moment to be signed off by them. Uh, so that's very good news. Um, Tamata, East Face, uh, still a work in progress. Um, there was a desire to see whether the prohibition line on the East Face could be brought lower down. That work is currently with Landscape Architect and we're expecting to get a report back from them at any time. Um, once that report comes back, it will go through the various committees and come back to council. John, do we have any, any indication when that report might be coming up? Uh, I think it'll be ready for the joint uh, workshop between uh, the two committees. 24, 24 okay. Days. Thank you for that. Um, just in terms of the residential intensification design, design guideline, and again, we've been talking about that this afternoon, um, that has no regulatory teeth. It's a, it's a voluntary design guide. It's a, it was introduced to our community early this year. Um, we've had uh, feedback, some very good feedback, um, and we've also had some suggestions from the industry and the team are looking at the possibility of just tweaking our district plan, which will allow us and the industry to um, actually progress with more intensive um, development. So um, that's a good outcome. It's not regulatory at the moment, but we may see further down the track that we, we do see that it has more teeth. Yeah, but a very good, very good start. Um, The State of the Environment Report, this is something Council has to do every five years. It's a massive piece of work. Um, covers a wide scope of Council activities. Um, it has come before the, our committee at our previous meeting. Um, it has just been tailored a little bit and that will be presented to Council. Uh, how far away is that, John? Next. Next meeting, is it? Yeah, substantial amount of work, substantial amount of reading, but an incredible sort of helicopter view of all the activities going on in this council. So pleased about that. Um, and the last thing I'd just like to draw your attention to, um, implementing of the National Planning Standards um, our team uh, are working very hard on this. Um, they've got till 2024, I think, John, is that correct, to get this done. We currently sort of have a place-based planning where we, we plan for different geographical areas, whether it be in the city or out in the, the rural areas. Um, the national policy now wants to see things, uh, how would you say more, um, more level playing field. Yeah, I, I guess I know, you could describe it for what it is, which is bureaucracy gone mad. <laughs> which is, you know, like seriously, and I know this is live streamed and stuff, but this is the idiocy of the bureaucracy at the moment, where you have a district plan, and the Ministry of Environment requires every council to rewrite it so it all looks the same across the country. Yeah. Um, so I can't believe um, the amount of resource that we're having to invest um, with all of the substantive things that we've got on. 
to basically rewrite and adopt the district plan to fit um, a national um, template. So, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm less polite yes, um, than yes. you, Chair, um, in, oh. in terms of um, the, the cost to the ratepayer. Um, Holy crap, of, the use of resource. Yeah. 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 Build yeah. Up, build up. Sure. Um, and look, just one final item, just in terms of the Marae plan change. Um, that went through its um, submission period, and then it went through the appeal period. The appeal period has closed. My understanding, there is no appeals. So um, that will go, the pro go through the process to become operative in the district plan. And that, that's a great result. Um, well done. So uh, open to you. A couple of questions here. Councillor, uh, Councillor Retzner. Thank you, Chair. Um, just, John, you mentioned about the workshop between Takatanora and district planning and bylaws. Um, do you actually have a date for that? Because I think the next um, joint here <coughs> on the Takatanora meeting is on the 12th. So I think, Rowan, it's confirmed on the 24th. 24th. No, the workshop's on the 12th. Um, yep. And then it'll go through to the committee. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Chair. I note um, Dr. James Graham organised a hui a iwi on the spatial plan. Is there anything to report on? That meeting and what came out of it? Yeah. Um, so we had a, so this was um, the um, region's leaders through the chief executives um, with our mana whenua um, having a conversation around um, spatial planning. Um, what is it? Um, you know, our intention to um, uh, basically say we want you uh, involved in this as, uh, as partners. We brought Bill Wosley and Shed Shedrick um, who's been leading all this from a Māori perspective and some of the examples you're aware of in Tainui and Bay of Plenty. So, um, yeah, positively, um, the um, was well well received. Um, basically, mana whenua, and we had a good turnout from across um, Hawke's Bay um, that said, yep, we're, we're, we're up for this, noting the commitment from councils that we prepared, like in other models, to actually support them financially to be a partner at the table. Is their commitment is to um, is to go away and basically work out what that looks like um, across um, their respective um, PSGs and Kai Whenua's. Um, TKO, which is their organising um, uh, sort of group, um, met last Friday, and um, we're just um, basically waiting for them to come back and confirm what the next steps are. But very very positive response. So just to follow up on that, um, given that the spatial plan is going to be region-wide, um, did that consult with Mana Whenua region-wide or just right the, the So everybody came from across the region, from Wairua to Tamatea. Um, so we had uh, um, yeah, the right right coverage. And as I say, um, we, you know, um, we, we've now left it to them. They've said, we will go away. And as TKO, work this out ourselves about how we, um, you know, their intent is we will want to be a partner at the governance, strategic and te technical working levels, and we will sort out what that looks like from us and come back to you and tell you, um, you know, um, how, well, how that, we want to do that. that. That's fantastic. Well done. Your Worship. Through you, Chair. Uh, thank you. Um, thank you for that update, Nigel. Um, just a follow-up question on the, um, the, the potential of Hawke's Bay being a pilot and uh, seeking government funding for, from the um, Ministry for Environment. Um, how are we progressing with that for our spatial plan? Yep, so um, the update, that, that work's being led by um, James Palmer at the Regional Council, and he's in dialogue with the Ministry for the Environment and the Minister for um, the Environment. And as you'll recall, we um, raised with our local MPs and our local minister that um, things that they could be advocating for um, is to absolutely support um, the, the Hawke's Bay, you know, the Hawke's Bay region um, with, uh, you know, with, with that um, sort of work. So we're just waiting to hear, but we're in the mix as one of the regions that they're considering to Great, support. Great, thank you. And just a follow-up question through you, Chair. Just a quick, um, the work programme under Forestry Slash, um, and hazard effects on waterways created by forestry pruning and thinning. And it says um, action yet to commence. Now, I thought we were co-funding a, a resource. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, so, I, there's a little yes. change in there, so okay. just update that. Um, I think Sean's reported once the committee, but 
Um, he's also in a, in a where he'd like to report his work and what he's been doing through to the Rural Community Board. Okay. So I've just got to talk with the, the chair about putting that on the next community board. And Sean would just like to come along and meet the uh, members, and that'll get it'll flow on through the council. Okay, so they've been in that role now for over a year. Is that correct? Yes. yes. That and so, yep. are, are they making some, you know, significant progress? Oh, yes, they are. And, okay. and I think um, well, Tani's not here, but I know Sophie and um, yep. and Rock cool. there is that um, he. I think he has made a substantial difference. Okay, um, cool. And some of our rural councillors have been ringing Sean and putting them onto various farms who've got issues with forestry. But uh, when he reports through, he'll give a, you know, an overview of what he's been doing and the locations and the issues he struck. Great. Thanks very much. Councillor Yeah, thank you. Sorry, just to follow up to my question before, can we take recommendations from a workshop? Uh, I'm, I'm asking on, uh, around the Takata Noor workshop, Takata Noor district planning workshop, because on the 24th, the meetings are the wrong way around for Tucker to to be able to give recommendations to just um, planning and <coughs> bylaws. Oh, I think the two chairs will we'll get together that. and we'll work that way. Yep, arrange the meetings so that. Cool. We're in the right I know that came up at council yeah. last week. Oh, Thank you. Councillor Nixon. Yeah, just a really quick question. Thanks, Chair. Uh, and I didn't notice this in my pre reading, but just that last item on forestry slash. I thought the problem with forestry slash blocking waterways is actually from forest harvesting, not necessarily uh, thinning and, and um, pruning. Um, it is a combination of both, and that's what Sean will talk about is he goes on to site, checks the resource conditions, uh, keeps a close eye on what's going on in various sites, and he's a joint employee between Hastings District and Hawke's Bay Region, so they have a, we have overlapping responsibilities. I, I was vaguely, I remember when we set yeah. that up, I just... Uh, it was just a cement. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Good boy. No more, any, no more questions, comments? If not, I'll get a ask for a mover and a second for the um, bylaws committee. Moved by Councillor Travis, seconded by um, Councillor Corbin. All those in favour, keep my eye. Aye. Aye. Any against? Carry. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chair. Kilda. Thank you, Councillor um, Watkins. Item 18. Um, which is a uh, recommendation to exclude the public uh, for our next item. I will ask um, Craig um, to, to give us the reason around why we would be going to PX. I assume, Mr Chair, um, the item concern contains uh, business commercially sensitive information of other organisations. Uh, it's not appropriate that Council makes that public at this time. Okay. So those are the reasons. Um, I need a mover and a seconder. Uh, who was that? Move, oh boy, quick. <laughs> Councillor <laughs> Keith Moose, seconded by uh, uh, the Worship the Mayor. All those in favour, keep my eye. Aye. Any against? Carried. So uh, thank you, everyone, for um, uh, the public part of this meeting. Uh, appreciate your attendance, uh, either in person or via uh, the Zoom link. And... Um, yeah, nama hi kia tātou katoa, uh, nō reira nama nā ki tāno te, te wahi ngaro, katoa mai nei ki rungi kia tātou, uh, ki anga whakamue nei mahi.